you start. No, you start. <laughs> Hi, Penny. Hi, James. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. It's good to see Hi. you this morning. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you were able to make time. Um, so, you know, um, today I we were just going to have a conversation a little bit about the symbolic modeling light format, and right. And what we found, um, what we found with that being very useful for people, grounding them in the symbolic modeling, getting them um, used to the process, giving them a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious because it's a little different than how I began teaching. I'm really curious about how you guys um, came up with that particular, the particular three day format, uh, the symbolic modeling light. Well, we spent, um, we spent years teaching um, the process and uh, we put the emphasis on various pieces of um, symbolic modeling. And what we dis uh, discovered was that um, people needed um, a, a framework, what we called a scaffolding in order to uh when when they're just starting out to to have a, a model that they could be thinking about when they are asking clean language questions of their clients and working in metaphor because metaphor is a different way of uh working with most individuals when you stay in that uh that experience the client's having and um the metaphor can can go in any direction of course the clean language questions direct attention mm -hmm. and we we discovered that um the framework the um symbolic modeling light uh could be a framework that would in a way help direct the facilitator's attention on on what to pay attention to in the client's landscape yeah uh, so that we found a lot of them that they really appreciated that rather than just trying to um, select what was important without having some something to guide them some kind of some kind of larger frame yes yes to, to know where they were in the process yes and we like the metaphor of scaffolding because yes. scaffolding is something you use and then you eventually take down so okay. people once they once they know how to use symbolic how to, to do a session with symbolic modeling light then they can start to look at other ways that that uh, they may find useful themselves in relation to the type of information the client's giving oh nice so, okay yeah yeah okay. so so giving them a framework that lets them have a bit more creative creativity and, and lateral with their client once they're um, working with them yes yes but I would say that to, to become proficient at symbolic modeling light is the place to start yeah um, because the whole symbolic modeling it like it's um, a pra it's a, a practical overview of the whole process so yeah. that in three days people can uh, can see and um, can see at, at either what they're facilitating or others are facilitating how the whole process can go through the client's information uh, and learn that in a three-day period. So there's a, a wholeness to it. Yeah, yeah. For me, I, I think of a map. Um, mm -hmm. uh, when I when I was teaching um, when I was teaching my introductory classes a little differently. Um, Kind of concentrating more on going deep on early skills um, i experienced the the client uh, the participants often is having a, a bit of lostness because mm -hmm. they they didn't have they had the knowledge of what was next but they didn't have the experience of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. and, and this particular format um the symbolic modeling light format this three days uh, really seems to give the participants an, a nice experience of what they're they're aiming towards yes yes yeah it's very hard when you start if you don't know where you're going <laughs> yeah. so there's this uh, well you know every session is is unique the, this symbolic modeling light gives um the facilitator a an idea of the kind of journey they're going to go on so mm -hmm. that they know 
generally speaking, the kind of where they are in the journey, not just the end point, mm -hmm. uh, where they are, the, the key uh, four or five stages that there are in a, uh, in a, sta in a traditional coaching session, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and I'm wondering, um, how have you found this, um, this format fitting in with continued learning? Um, for people who really want to really want to become proficient at symbolic modeling Well, you know, it's like a lot of things the you, you can look at the symbolic modeling light process and it looks fairly simple and It is and then you look at it again and you realize <laughs> actually there's a little bit more to it and then you look at it again and you realize there's a bit more to it and uh, You know, we can, we um, have been revisiting the process over and over and we still discover these interesting depths to it so and and it's it's the, it's the way we start all of our sessions more or less mm -hmm. certainly all of our coaching sessions we start with this process we stick to it and then as the session unfolds so then uh, the experience that we have comes in so it, it provides, a, um, to use a different metaphor, you know, a foundation <laughs> on which to add all the other skills because they, um, you've got a solid base mm -hmm. on, on which to add the other skills. And there are plenty of other advanced skills to get. There's plenty of, you know, wonderful, subtle ways to notice what's happening with the client and model out their landscape and drop in those questions that really give them something to think about. Um, but it really helps to have that basics. And the other time when it's really useful is when you, you know, everybody every now and then gets lost. We've been doing this 25 years, but still yeah. occasionally we kind of go, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so whenever that happens, we go right back to the basics, right back yeah. to the absolute basics. And we start again from that. Yeah, so it, it it kind of relieves the need for clever. I I sometimes I sometimes tease mm -hmm. that symbolic modeling is like the cure for being clever, um, uh -huh. and and uh, and I agree that that iteration from like oh oh this is simple. I mean, when I first started learning, I thought I watched the video, I read the book, I was like oh I can do that. <laughs> and then I got about four questions in with a real human being and, and I'm just like grateful that you know my mind was like clear enough to say oh this is this is really more this is more than what I just watched um, one thing I uh, really like about the three-day symbolic modeling light um, uh, workshop is for a lot of people new learning the process is it helps them to see what happens when you have a process that is desired outcome focused. Yeah. So that it isn't that we avoid problems, we simply don't address them until we use symbolic modeling light framework to facilitate the client to have a fully embodied desired outcome landscape, a desired outcome metaphor. Hmm. And, uh, and putting their attention on that and the embodiment of that through the metaphor um, changes their relationship to their original problems and issues. And to see learners, new learners, discover that, the difference that can make um, is, is quite delightful. Uh, and how to work with problems from that state of this is really what I want. And it's like, whatever. It's, it's a whole different animal, isn't it? <laughs> to use a metaphor, yes. To use a meta another <laughs> metaphor, right? I mean, this is like so funny because we're talking about a metaphorical process and in order to even describe it, it's yeah. <laughs> been popping up. Oh, wait, another one, popping up <laughs> metaphors left and right. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And David Grove, you know, once said that clean language questions are simple because people are complex enough. And uh, I think, you, you know, when we were designing the symbolic modeling light process, but that was really in the back of our mind. How can we make a process that's as simple as possible that allows other, the person we're working with to be as complex as they want 
but yeah. we don't have to get lost in their complexity. And, um, and that doesn't mean we direct the process because at the same time, one of the challenges when we were designing this was how do you design a process to work with a complex adaptive system called a human being <laughs> that does all sorts of stuff, does all do their own things. They're unique and, the, and their metaphors are unique. 25 years, we've never heard two metaphor landscapes the same. All sorts of wonderful things happen, surprising and unexpected things happen. How do you design a process that allows you to work in that emergent way? And um, it's got to be simple uh, yeah. in its structure, but flexible enough to respond to all those things that happen. Because those things happening are not the problem. Those things happening are the process. Is the process working? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, what comes to mind, too, is um, uh, that there's a lot of talking about flex. When you said flexibility, what, what happened in my mind is I thought about um, there's a lot of innovations happening in, uh, with the use of clean questions, all mm -hmm. sorts of, I, I call them mini models, mm -hmm. um, easy to apply kind of mini models. But a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of these, almost every one that I'm aware of has come from someone who has the grounding um, and the training in symbolic modeling that, that this is like, this is like the, the ground zero mm -hmm. of, of using this, this kind of methodology, this thinking process to, mm -hmm. to do something different. I think, I mm. think, um, that I think that's abs absolutely accurate. And, uh, not only have those, those innovators had the clean language questions, they know them in every cell of their body. And they know how to have had experience of working with metaphor, mm -hmm. but also they have learned more about modeling. And the modeling is a key piece. And once you can, once you are um, experienced modeling a client's landscape, that modeling skill can generalize and you can take it into other areas. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of the new processes being taken into business and education and every place else i think kind of that's where a lot of that emerges from yeah the modeling the skill of modeling itself and yes. and the, yes. the principles of clean and then having the questions and the thinking yeah. behind it to to navigate yeah to navigate what what you uh come, come up to yes yeah. so yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and to respond to what's happening in the moment. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it's all happening right now. And one of the kind of principles behind a clean approach is that what, whatever the client presents and in whatever way they present it, that's enough. We don't need anything else. There's plenty of material to work with. You just need to work with what, what you're given. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and, and that's an interesting kind of discipline for the facilitator to simply stay with what's presented by the client and stay within that, those, uh, those framework and the logic of that. And what the clean language questions combined with symbolic modeling light does, it disciplines the facilitator to do that. Um, and that's a skill in itself because oh, we all want yeah. to put in our, our advice and our suggestions and our metaphors. And you have to learn to <laughs> set them aside for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's, there's one as other aspect of the symbolic modeling light, um, this particular three-day um, training, uh, that I think is really valuable for people is that if somebody doesn't want to continue, and I've noticed with some of, like, I've had professional coaches that have come in, and, and it's given them just enough uh, to, to begin to apply clean in their practices work with their clients and some have gone on to to train more and some have found that it's it's just enough but they have that framework that they can continue to learn from mm -hmm. and iterate with rather than leaving kind of half baked let's say having uh having trained it for years and and seeing many participants many many people learn that the process uh, particularly in a coaching environment, if you become proficient in, in, the, in symbolic modeling light, mm -hmm. then in, especially in coaching, that probably, I'm guessing maybe 70% of clients, 80% of clients, that will be all they need and you yeah. need. Yeah. Um, uh, but as we know, 
there are clients who have binds, uh, complex problems that we call <laughs> binds, and can, can you learn to model those out in metaphor. But here's the interesting thing. In order to identify the specific bind a that a client is experiencing, we start with the symbolic modeling light framework. And it is out of that, the specific problem, the specific binding nature of that landscape emerges. Yeah. So how you get to that is through those three days. Yeah. And, and, that and, foundational. and then there are then there are things that you can work with 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 those more complex things, but for a lot of coaches, that's all they need for their client base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super. Well, I I've been really um, I've just been really thrilled that you guys shared your symbolic modeling light with me, and that I've been able to to begin to use it with participants. Um, well, I'm lovely yeah. to see you teaching it as well. Yeah. yeah. And I think that, you know, the kind of things that people appreciate from this three day workshop, um, is, you know, in addition to the, the, the kind of the framework, the overview, is that the, the, um, the demonstrations of real sessions using the process mm. um, live in the moment whereby you, you don't know what the client is going to bring up. You don't know what the topic is going to be. You just use the process and it's, it's real. And I think that people learn a lot from real demonstrations that are not kind of pre-planned or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. And, no made up scenarios, no pretend oh, wow. and put this other person's hat on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people get a lot of their own personal development when they're in the client role on those three days as well. It's amazing how much you can get from uh, someone asking you those questions yeah. um, and, and how much those metaphors, the metaphors do so much of the work, mm -hmm. um, but you've got to experience it to believe it. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a bit like a presenting dream in Jungian analysis. I, I have a metaphor that came up in my first training in early 2006, mm -hmm. and it's still alive for me. It, yeah. it changes a little, but it, it still is, is really present and, um, and profoundly useful uh, mm. to me even now, years and years later, and that was just in one of my first trainings. Right, so, right. Yeah, super. Well, it's going to be great to have you guys here in California in January. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is um, this will be our third year, and uh -huh. yeah, my third year doing the symbolic modeling light, and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to having you both here for your advanced programs and um, the retreat, and James for the clean interviewing. Mm, and, uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. I I just. Uh, I just have found this, I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't sure when I began teaching it, whether it was going to be enough. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm so glad that I just began and did it because what I found is, is just what you're saying. This, this scaffolding, this structure, this broader view, in my words, kind of this map. So participants mm -hmm. know where they are and, and really giving people the opportunity to choose whether they, they want to go deeper and further in the process right. or if this right. is just enough uh, right. for exactly. what they want to have happen. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, California, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. All right, you guys. Thank you. Take See care. You bye bye. bye.